this is gonna look really funny when I cut it. Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Elle and the author of the blog Enlivening Elle. So today this is the kind of pre-Christmas power yoga flow. Um, so the idea here is we're just going to get the lower body moving a little bit more than you might be potentially in the next few days. So we'll be building a little bit of strength, a little bit of heat um, into the legs, particularly the quads, but we'll also try and make sure that the glutes don't get forgotten about. And then we'll also start opening up through the hips, trying to preemptively release any tightness that you're going to start to build up over the next few days or few weeks. So as always, you'll just need your mat option of having a brick if you wish, and I hope you enjoy the class. We're gonna start seated, um, make yourself comfortable, preferably cross-legged, unless that doesn't work for you, or maybe get a brick involved if you wanna sit up on that. Then from here, just close the eyes for a moment, get settled into the practice, take a deep inhale through the nose, and then open out the mouth to side out on the exhale. Either keeping the eyes closed or blink them open. Take the hands as you inhale, reach them up to the sky. And exhale, let them lower back down. Inhaling, reaching. And exhaling, closing back down. Once again, reach high. Big, expansive movements here. Exhaling down. Reach high and this time interlace the hands at the top. Press the palms away up to the ceiling. And exhale, let the hands fall out to the side. Roll through the shoulders, create a bit of space here. Maybe spent a lot of time hunched up over on sofas or curled up in front of the fire. So create openness now. Sweep the right hand up on your next inhale, up to the ceiling. Take the left hand, fingertips wide. And then exhale to come into a side twist, trying to keep the left shoulder, sorry, the right shoulder over the left, chest spiraling upwards. You might come onto the forearm, you might stay up on the hand, reaching through, reaching that right hand up and away. Inhale, come all the way back upright. And then swapping sides, exhaling, finding your twist. Sorry, finding your side stretch. Let's not twist quite yet. Maybe you come down onto the forearm. Inhaling all the way back up. Roll through those shoulders again. Reach the hands up high. Exhale, open them out again. This time take them into a wide T. Stretch the fingers really wide. And then exhale, press them back. Reach them forward, take a little bit of opening. Moving with the breath and exhale, let the hands come all the way back down. You'll then come over onto your all fours and find a moment to take some cat and cow motions. So inhale, drawing the chest through. Exhale, rounding through, tucking the tailbone under, pressing the ground away. Inhaling, creating openness focusing on pulling the chest forwards to open the upper back rather than crunching into the lower back and tipping the neck back. Exhale, wow. rounding. Wow. 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 Inhaling wow. forwards, wow. you might be able to hear the wow. dog in the background. to round. Come back into your neutral spine and then exhale into a child's pose, reaching fingertips forwards, draw the shoulder blades down for a little bit of a shoulder stretch and breathe through here, slow breath. As you settle into the breath, maybe you keep the hands reaching out, maybe you let the forearms relax down, the head to round down a little bit. Your choice here, but breathing through. Breathing through. 
If you're not there already, breathing through the nose, both in and out. Slow, steady breath. And then come back all the way upright. Walk the hands slightly further forward to the shoulders. Tuck the toes under. Exhale back and up. Finding your way towards the downward dog. Walking one leg out. And the other. Pedaling through. Once you settle in. Just have a bit of a check in with your downward dog. So really press the fingertips into the mat, that fleshy bit of the hand between thumb and index finger. Press the ground away, shoulders move away from the ears, the shoulder blades squeeze together. Draw the stomach in slightly, try and keep those hips going up high and backwards. If you're quite bendy, just make sure you don't overextend, just bring the shoulders back a little bit. Legs might be slightly bent. Still thinking about those heels moving towards the ground. And then exhale, step the feet forwards, up in between the hands. Lift up halfway. Exhale to fold. Inhale, pressing the toes into that squeeze in the back of the legs. You can inhale up with a flat back. Coming up straight and strong, reaching high. And then exhale, folding back down. Inhale, lifting up halfway, looking forwards, tabletop in the back. Exhaling, folding. Inhale, reaching all the way back up high. Exhaling back down. Halfway lift again. Exhale and back. This time hands come down onto the mat. Step back to your plank. Shoulders over the wrists. Exhale, knees down to the ground. Move forwards and down. Keep the elbows as close to the rib cage as your joints will allow. Lowering down to the ground. Hands come forwards and wide. You might knock over your brick if you're me. Inhale, lifting up halfway or all the way. Exhaling, we'll do two more of those. Inhaling, kneecaps lift slightly to protect the lower back as you rise up. Exhaling, lowering. Once more, inhaling, the arms might not fully extend, you might keep a soft bend into the elbows if that keeps the shoulders relaxed. And coming back down. Hands come back in line with the chest, toes stuck under. And find your way back to that downward dog. If you find like it's quite hard to straighten the spine, maybe you feel like you're trying to round forwards, or perhaps you're just desperately trying not to walk the hands towards the feet, pop a bend into the knees so you can keep a straight long spine without having to come closer towards the feet with your hands or rounding forwards. And then from here, the right leg will come forwards in between the hands, helping it if needs be. Drop in the back knee down to the ground, inhaling, reaching up, interlace the hands, squeeze the shoulder blades together, inhale, exhale, maybe sink into the hips. Get a bit of a shoulder stretch here as well as a hip opener, breathing through. Exhale, hands come back down, Tuck the back toe under, lift back up. Option to go for straight into a downward dog or take a break in child's pose or exhale, find your flow. Maybe take full chaturanga this time. Maybe you come into a low cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Then take the left side to inhale, draw that left leg through, maybe all the way, maybe give it that helping hand, back knee comes down to the ground. Inhaling. This time go for the opposite interlocks, that's the one that doesn't feel automatic and natural, it might even feel a little bit weird. Just you're getting that little bit of equal and opposite practice, working on all sides of the body evenly. 
Breathing through, drawing those shoulder blades together, sinking into the hips. Releasing the hands, step back to your plank again, your choice whether you flow or whether you rest. Maybe you go for full upward dog this time, keeping the shoulders away from the ears. Exhale to find your way back into downward dog. And then we'll start to come into our warriors. So we're going to be holding poses for a little bit longer here, so make sure you're breathing through the nose in a controlled fashion as much as possible. So right leg through between the hands. Take a pause and drop the back foot down so the toes are in line with a short edge of the mat. Inhale, come up to standing. If you've been flowing for a while, if yoga is your thing, then maybe come straight into your warrior two, or maybe start the hands on the hips, you have a little bit of a check in. Can you see the big toe of the front foot so that the knee is stacked over the ankle? Are the hips and the torso pointing sideways? Is the back leg straight and strong, pressing into the outer edge of the back foot? Inhaling, make sure that the bum's not sticking out, the torso is upright. Reaching the arms out into a T, relaxing the shoulders even as the hands reach apart. Turn the gaze forwards, but make sure the torso doesn't follow you, keep the torso upright. And just make sure you're pressing into the outer edge of the front foot so the knee doesn't collapse inwards. Breathing here, if there's room, maybe you exhale a little bit deeper, a little bit closer to so that thigh going parallel. Moving with the breath. If you need to back out slightly doing so, if not, just hold that pose nice and strong. And if you need to give your quad a break, inhale, slightly straighten that leg, or maybe all the way straighten it. And then everyone exhale, that right leg will rebend. You'll come into your side angle pose. So even if you know you can go quite deep, standing a little bit higher up, and then as you breathe, you can slowly let that elbow come closer towards the knee. Maybe you work your hand down towards the foot, but making sure you don't have to drop the left shoulder to do so. Keep spiraling the chest upwards, left shoulder above the right. Pressing that arm into the thigh, wherever the hand is. And don't forget about the back leg. Keep pressing into that one as well. Breathing through. And then from here, inhale to come all the way back up, straighten the front leg, bend into the back leg. You might just adjust the heel so the toes point backwards slightly. The front toes might come up into a high skandhasana. So even if you can, don't go all the way down to the ground. Use as a springboard to inhale back up to straight. You might need to heel toe both feet in a little bit and then turn the toes out or heels in. And then exhale to come into your goddess squat. So a wide squat. Again, make sure those knees aren't collapsing inwards. You can even place the hands on the inner thighs to press them out if that feels good. Or keep the hands in prayer. Your choice. Sinking down. Make sure you're not tipping forwards. So sticking the bum out. Keep drawing in. So from the side. Sinking down as if I was sliding my back down a wall rather than sticking my bum out and keeping that tailbone tucking under. And then from there, inhale to come up straight, back foot turns in, bend, cartwheel the arms, step back to your plank. If you're flowing, flow with me. If not, take your break in downward dog or child's pose. It might not be a break if it's in downward dog. Exhaling. Ground presses away. Then bring it onto the left side, so I'll just turn around in a second so I don't have my back to you. So left leg will come forwards, back foot in line with the short edge of the mat, coming up, setting up same as before if you need to go through those cues again. Main one is thinking about being able to see your big toe and pressing into the outer edges of both feet. Arms straight and strong, maybe just check that that back hand hasn't snuck down, keep upright. 
Let the shoulders relax, breathing through. If you need to take the feet further apart as you sink a little bit deeper on your exhales, then doing so. One more breath here, so maybe you inhale and straighten this leg to give it a break. And then exhale, side angle. So right arm comes up and overhead, and you kind of want to have your upper arm in line with the ear. So if the arm's up here, it's not going to quite touch, and if the head's collapsing, it's not going to touch either. So bring it up, nice strong head, straight and strong arm, as if you're drawing a line all the way up. Keep pressing into that left knee. Maybe the hand sneaks down if there's room. Might just be halfway there. Might just be a little bit closer towards the knee. Breathing through. Keep pressing into that back foot. And then inhale to come up. Bending into that back leg so my toes tend to turn out here. And my left toes even lift. Coming back up so you're using that low side lunge as, or well that high side lunge more particularly, as a bit of a springboard. Bringing my feet back in, so we're coming back into that goddess squat, a little bit of a different variation this time. So exhale into that goddess squat again, either hands prayer or against the knees or even on the hips if that feels better for you. And then from here, inhale, lift the right heel off the air, off into the air. Exhale it down, inhale it up. Make sure you're not going high, or maybe even exhale a little bit deeper. Each time you exhale and take the heel back down to the ground. Two more of those. One more. And then we swap onto the left side. So five again. Keeping low or going lower. That's three. That's four. Keep pressing those knees outwards. That's five. We're not quite done yet. If you can, maybe you start to come up onto both heels. You might go part way. You might go all the way, hold it here. Exhale down, straighten in both legs. Turn the left toes back forwards, bending into that left knee, cartwheel the hands down. And then you'll take your flow. So I'll come back to my downward dog. You might be flowing again. You might go straight to downward dog. You might be breathing in child's pose. Whatever is good for you is where you need to be. Lifting the right leg up into the air, trying to keep the toes flexed down towards the air, towards the ground, so you're leading with the heel. Exhale, knee to nose, rounding forwards. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, right knee towards right knee or tricep. Inhale, back up. Exhale, twisting towards the left tricep or elbow. Inhaling. And then exhale and coming all the way forwards, right hand will come wide, or sorry, right foot will come wide of the right hand. And then from here, keeping on the back toes, start to lift the left hand up. So you'll want to have the right arm pressing into the right leg as you open up. So normally we twist the other way. So it might feel a little bit wobbly here, so really press upper arm and knee in to one another. If it feels a bit too wobbly to look at the ceiling, keep looking towards the floor or maybe look out to the side. Exhale that left hand down, squeezing that right hip back, left hip forward so you realign the hips back to centre. And then you might stay here, you might be getting a stretch here, you might walk the hands forwards, you might come down onto the forearms, whatever version of lizard works for you. Choosing where you want to be. Try to avoid the right knee opening up too far. Keep squeezing it in a little bit. And then walking the hands back underneath the shoulders if they're not already there. Step back to your plank. And then straight back to downward dog. Left side, left leg reaches up into the air, toes flex down, 
exhale, knee to nose, rounding forwards. The more you round, the more you can go forwards. Inhaling. Exhale, elbow and knee come towards one another. Inhaling. Exhale, left knee twist to the right. Inhaling all the way back up. Exhale, left knee goes wide of the left hand, left foot goes left, wide of the left hand. And then from here we're coming, coming into that twist again. So you'll have your right foot, sorry, your left foot in line with the shoulder and the arm and the leg in contact, start to twist up, opening up, your choice where the gaze is, squeezing leg and arm together to keep that balance, reaching the hands, even fingertips, exhale to take that hand back, I'll come back to this side of my mat, and then back into your lizard pose again, so your choice where those hands go, breathing in, Really press into that back foot so it's staying straight and strong. Getting a little bit of a hip opener here. And then coming back upright. Step the foot back. Get straight back into your downward dog. Have a bit of a stretch out here. Maybe press the left toes back behind the right heel. Right toes back behind the left. And then tiptoeing forwards all the way back up towards the top of the mat or almost all the way there if you're a bit close to something like a Christmas tree. Inhaling to come back up to standing. Hands come back down. Check in, find your mountain pose, whether that's feet together or a little bit of a gap apart, whatever feels better for you. And then from here, lifting up, we're coming into a chair posture. So sweep the fingertips back, reaching up. Hands can either be in front or up here. So just check in, you want to be able to see your toes or at least your big toes, but not having your feet completely off the air once you've checked either there. So not leaning back on the heels or tipping too far back on the toes. Hips drawing backwards, but see if you can tuck that tailbone under. Reaching up and then exhale. A little bit deeper. Inhale, so we're going to take little pulses here. So as you exhale, Relax down, inhale, squeeze the bottom muscles to come up a little bit higher. Exhale, so we're kind of taking squat movements here, but we're turning them into a yogic chair posture, squat, pulse. Don't really have a name for it. Squeezing up, exhaling down. So by squeezing the bottom, you're taking this more into a hamstring and glute exercise rather than just a quad, so top of the thigh exercise. The hands getting tired, bring them forwards. If you want to keep them burning, keep them working, keep them up. Nice. And then if you can, if you've still got any juice left, come up onto the toes. Maybe sink a little bit deeper. And then inhale all the way back up. Exhale down, walking out through the knees. Well done. And we'll find our way to a downward dog. So if you want to take a flow, you're more than welcome to do so. Follow me through, go at your own pace. Or go straight to child's pose, exhaling down. Inhaling up, try not to knock over the Christmas tree. Exhale, step back to your plank, lower through. Inhale, back bend of your choice. Exhale, downward dog. Hello. <laughs> then from here, you'll come down onto the knees, cross the ankles. Hi, can I go there? <laughs> when your dog lets you, you'll come down, whoop, thank you sir, into seated, all the way down to the ground, what's the bedding, I'm going to get licked here. <laughs> From here we're coming into a single leg glute bridge, so you want to make sure your feet aren't too close towards the bottom, in fact if you move them an inch away, it actually takes it more into the backs of your legs. Lift the right knee up. <laughs> I 
lift the right knee up and then driving through the left heel, squeeze up to lift the hips. Exhale to lower. Inhale to lift. Exhale to lower. Inhaling three. Exhale for four. Exhale for five. Release. And six. Squeeze up at the top. Exhaling all the way back down. Right foot comes in line with the left. And then the left leg lifts. Inhale to prepare. I think I switched my breaths around last time, so we'll do it properly this time. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, drive through the right heel to lift up. Inhale, relax down. Exhale, lift. Inhale, down. Exhale, up. Inhale, back down. Exhale. Inhale, keep driving, keep squeezing the bottom. One more. Exhaling all the way to the top. And releasing back down. <laughs> Feet come onto the ground and just wings and wipe of the knees. <laughs> what? Okay, can I go? And you might just find it good to windscreen wipe of the knees from side. <laughs> this is going to look really funny when I cut it. <laughs> okay. Can I? Can I have a minute? Can I have a minute? Then from here, push yourself up into seated position. I'll come back forwards in front of the mirror and bring the soles of the feet together. Knees come out to the side. Lifting up here, so we're going into another hip opening exercise. You might find it nice to open up the feet like a page of a book, depends on how good your ankles are feeling today. It might feel nice to press the thumbs in around the foot, get a little bit of a massage out there. Lifting up. And exhale, let the knees come, the elbows come out wide and you might just stay here or you might keep folding to take the pose a little bit deeper. This is entirely your choice. You might prefer just to stay upright and let the arms just rest on the knees. A little bit of weight on the knees just to encourage a bit of opening through the hip. And let the head drop down. Bye then. And inhaling to come all the way back upright. Draw the knees in and cross at the ankles, roll your way over onto seated, onto all fours, and then lower down onto the belly. Take the hands forwards and wide, and we'll come back into those cobra waves. So we've moved, we've taken our glute bridge, our bridge posture to be quite an active pose. So here we're gonna take more of a back bend on our bellies. So as you inhale, kneecaps lift, ripple up, exhale, soften back down. Inhaling and exhaling once more, inhaling and exhale, hands come back in line with the chest, reach back to your all fours and then stretch the right foot out, so toes on the ground, heel presses back as if you're going against an imaginary wall. Release them back down, left side pressing the foot away, pressing the heel away, and back down, then come back onto the belly. Then from here you might, we're going to just take it one foot at a time unless you're feeling particularly bendy and open today. So just stand on my left side so you can actually see. So you'll take the right foot, or in my case the left, and just bend it up. Sweep the arm around. If you can't quite reach the foot, then you can just twist yourself open slightly until you can grab it, preferably the outer edge, but you'll see where you grab onto. If you find that even doing that you can't grab it, then get a belt, wrap it around the foot, and then you can pull the foot towards you. Once you've grabbed hold of the foot, bring the torso back down, left hand back to the side, and I usually find having my, if you've got the room, you can even have the fingers pointing down the foot for whatever you grab and start to pull the foot towards you. 
If you're not getting too much of a stretch, then try and go for the fingers pointing down the feet. You can bring the foot closer, bend the arm out to the side, and stretch through. If you're still not getting super a big stretch, you might want to do both feet at once. Press the feet towards you, or even take them slightly wide, breathing in here. And then either with one or both feet, press the right foot or both feet in towards the hands and try and keep the torso on the ground for now. So rather than coming into your boat pose, sway up here. But just trying to get stretched through by pressing the foot or feet into the hands. Relax down, let the feet just fall out to the side or foot fall out to the side. And then if you just took one side, then swap now, so go onto your left side, your opposite side, or if you did both feet before, then just have both feet in again. So starting off, drawing the foot or feet towards you. And then exhale, opposite action, pressing the feet away into the hands. And then if it feels good, if you've got both feet, it might feel nice to keep pressing the feet into the ground and let the torso lift up into a bow pose. If the knees go wide, draw them back in and then exhale down let the feet come down to the ground tuck them so you can windscreen wiper the heels from side to side releasing out the lower back press the hands back in come all the way back up take a pause in your all fours so you've got a nice flat back again and then walk the knees wide exhale Wide child's pose, reaching out, reaching the ground away, breathing through. And then from here, walk the hands around to the right hand side into a side stretch. If you want to increase the stretch, reach the left hand on top of the right, drop the head back down. And just breathing into that left side of the body where you're probably getting a stretch, particularly the left armpit. Inhale, walking the hands back around to center. Exhale, take them around to the left. Maybe the right hand walks its way on top of the left. Settling back down, breathing through that stretch once again. And then walking your way back around to center. Inhale and exhale in your white child's pose. And then walking your way back up two or fours, drawing the knees in, walking the hands and the knees forward so you can cross at the ankle, roll onto the bottom, lowering down all the way onto the back and let the knees open out to the side, bringing the soles and the feet together to touch and just giving yourself 30 seconds or so just to breathe in your supine Baddha you're reclining Cobbler's pose. knees a hug into the chest. Nice squeeze. And then press yourself up nice and slowly into seated. Ready to end the practice. So hopefully that's got you feeling a little bit more like you've moved in your body, but a little bit of strength and then you've opened up the hips. So really been giving the lower body, the legs, a little bit of love, ready for the Christmas period. But I hope you have a wonderful Christmas, um, if I don't check in with you before. 
Um, thank you so much for watching. As always, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And don't forget to check me out on my website and on Instagram. It's all linked in the comments below. Thanks very much. Namaste. Merry Christmas.